Hi, thank you both for coming to speak to me. I really, thank you. really appreciate Hi. it. Um, now, how important is it to tell the truth about the prison experience? Mm. And, and obviously in different ways you've both had to either protect that or, or try and convey that. And how have you gone about trying to ensure that that truth is there? Mm -hmm. uh, when I set out to write the book, uh, Orange is the New Black, you know, it was my memoir, and it was incredibly important to be truthful, really truthful. You know, memoirs really, uh, have so much scrutiny today that, you know, you damn well better be truthful. Mark my French. <laughs> um, so that was really important to make sure that I was depicting the world, you know, exactly as I saw it. That said, you know, it's my perspective. You know, other people have different perspectives on their own prison experience. But if you set out to tell a story not about your greatest accomplishment, but about your biggest screw up, then you know you had better be truthful because the audience or the reader expects it. Mm. Mm. And protecting that truth, how do you? Yeah, I mean, I, I really felt uh, I, I felt especially you know spe after I read the book and especially as I sort of I got to know Piper even more, I, I felt you know that there. I, f I felt, a, you know, a responsibility. It felt like there. this is a, you know, a very courageous way to deal with some extraordinary life circumstances. And I think that bringing as much integrity and honesty as we, as, as I could to the, to the story was really important to me. But you've both talked about it as, as telling the truth of a life story, but in a way you're telling the truth also of something that's universally important. I mean, it's, yeah. it's part, part of a culture. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, is it a political act, telling this story? Mm -hmm. um, it may be a political act for me personally, in terms of stepping forward and saying, you know, something that many folks, you know, find shameful or would hide away, I instead choose to talk about publicly. Um, I think what's fascinating to me about the show is that the show is not a docudrama. You know, it is something much more creative and interesting and provocative than that in terms of the choices that Genji and the team have made uh, and how to tell not just Piper Chapman's story, but all of the characters' stories. And so I think what the show puts forward is a fascinating comment on our life at this moment in time in terms of who's in prison, why they're there, and what happens to them there. So Genji is not here. We've got the perfect opportunity to talk about her. I, I, mean, I sort of imagine, in a sense, part of her role is as a mediator, in a sense, like helping communicate what she can get from 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 you to to you, in a sense. But I'm sure as well, you know, there's a lot of other aspects that, that you can shine a bit of a light onto what she did. Oh, Genji did something really incredible um, for me, having you know lived this experience to see what she created first and foremost with her writing and her team of writers in terms of the storylines that she created, amazing. The production design is stunning from my point of view. You know, my husband and I walked onto set for the first time and we both were a little frozen because you know, both of us felt this drop in our stomach of like, oh my God, we're back here. And, uh, you know, so many details that just create this world of Litchfield. But it is a world that, you know, Genji has created. Again, you know, it's not a, it's not a documentary film. It's its, an, its own fascinating, fascinating world. Mm. Can you remember some of your first conversations with her? With Genji? Yeah. Yeah. Um, w one, of the, the, one of the main things that we discussed... Huh, what were some of the first conversations? Well, one of the first things we talked about was how we were creating our own world, how it was really, it was based on this really, this this memoir that we both really admired, um, and how it also had some truth in what's really happening in the prison system today, and how we both have, Genji and I both um, have a lot, we, we feel strongly about that as well, but how the, our, our show falls right in the middle of that, and we're sort of creating something that is, um, unique and different and a fantasy it's not real you know our prison is not real so we, there's a lot of there was a lot of freedom in that um there's a lot of freedom in knowing that we we weren't you know this we're not necessarily um that we're telling a story that we're telling a story it's meant to be consumed as you know entertainment and it, the, everything as fiction and anything other than that is you know a byproduct
I'm, I'm out of time, but I am very curious. Do you think um, you're binge viewers? Are you just, are you going to be like me on July the 11th? You know the way I'm going to behave. It's going I'm going to get them all in. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the way that you're you're driven towards this sort of stuff? Do you feel that way about when Netflix drop it all at once? Well, inadvertently, that has sort of been the way that I consume television now. I mm -hmm. mean, but I didn't. Uh, that sort of just happened. Like I, I uh, that's how most of my friends watch TV. Um, just waiting for a, a series to be on. TV and then you can watch or be online and you can watch it all at once. So I, I think it's great that you know you get to do that with this. People people will will watch however they want to watch. You know some people may you know feel that compulsion and it may be like popcorn to them and some people may savor it and take their time but they'll do it however they want. Well, if they only gave me a few pages of your book at once, I think I'd be quite frustrated. So I like the idea of getting <laughs> it on. Thank you very much for for talking. Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you.